I'm going to introduce the second act for tonight. That is the Socrates. Ladies and gentlemen, Socrates. Thanks so much. Keep going there, Denver. It's your last night, by the way. You are moving on, right? Uh, sorry, I think everybody's going to miss you. So yeah, my name is Socrates. I am an American. Okay. Yeah. What have you heard? Yeah, it's uh, it's a weird thing. Uh, you know, the, the, the country you know, used to have a little more of a shine to it a while ago. Uh, I blame uh, politics. But if you realize what politics kind of comes from, it makes more sense. Uh, in the end, you know, poly, it, it, it's a great word, of course, politics. It comes from poly, which means many. And ticks. You know, blood sucking parasite that spreads diseases. Politics. Now, you know, Socrates, if you tried to warn the world, Socrates won, that is, you know, or Socrates crying. You want to use this Transformers thing. But he tried to warn the world about democracy back in a long time ago, in the way, way back, and because see, he was worried that if the voters did not understand the issues, that they could be persuaded into voting for something stupid. Yeah, it's funny now. <laughs> but back, back then, it was a real word. You know, so if you pay attention to American politics recently, well, he tried to warn everybody, but nobody listened. You know? went viral with this whole method. But yeah, I find it interesting. I'm an American living here 13 years, so uh, learning Dutch was an interesting experience for me. I spoke some Greek earlier. I find the whole concept of words themselves is sort of fantastic, that we can agree that these all mean the same things, and I can say these sounds, and you're like, oh, move. <laughs> but the, the whole idea of words, it's like, if you take the, you know, comedy itself is completely word-based, you know what I mean? If you take the words out of it, it's like a jazz song that you sing a cappella. <laughs> I was thinking about that earlier. I thought it made sense, because you say that's not with any words. And uh, so it's like, I find it amazing, like certain words, the sounds of them become words, you know? Like, you know, ka. A ka is a, is a strange sound to turn into a word. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like it's, I don't really have a perfect definition, but it's very pleased. It's a very happy word. Yeah, you know, I like it so much. It's a, it's a very nicer sounding meaning than sound to me, at the very least. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I, I know I find it interesting that we have to go through these, this different way of communicating from each other. But words can uh, they can get you out of trouble. Uh, they can get you in trouble as well. Depends on how you use your words. Like uh, the other week, I actually uh, got myself, I got out of trouble because I almost got arrested in a park. Until I explained to the officer that I was merely having a gender reveal party. <laughs> it's a boy! <laughs> so yeah, I actually learned a Dutch word a little while ago that changed my entire life. Unfortunately, that word was aangereden, which means to be crashed into. And in my case, it was aangereden when a scooter caught it. Did I pronounce it badly? Never <laughs> 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 enough. I said I'm American. Yes, but I, I understood all your name. I thought it was wrong. You said aangereden. What does the other word mean? No, I, 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 what would that I word mean? I know, but what's the other word mean? Uh, someone from an Algerian. Oh, an Algerian. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I was on a lot of drugs during this whole phase, but uh, yeah, this, but this uh, car drove on my bike path, and then a scooter drove on a bike path, staring at the car, and he came on the wrong side, the Algerian side of the road. <laughs> And I tried to explain to him the whole thing about him hearing him, but he didn't get it. And all I had time to say was, ah! And I went flying through the air, much like a hairy bird. <laughs> but I landed like a Greek octopus. And uh, all the arm over here, I broke half of my arms. And yeah. 
And I had to call an ambulance, or at least I wanted an ambulance. I asked, like, you know, the dial 112. I figured that one out quick because 911. I'm not getting this shit here. And I told them that I needed an ambulance, and they said, were you passing out? And I said, not at the moment. And he said, well, take a taxi. <laughs> I'm serious. I thought for a moment, I said, uh, I think I might pass out. <laughs> oh, we'll send an ambulance. <laughs> Squeaky wheel gets the grease. And uh, the ambulance came, and he offered me fentanyl. Now I'm an American, you know? Don't tease me. <laughs> Give me the heroin, you yeah? know? And that's a big difference between an ambulance and a taxi. You have to set the fence with the law beforehand with the taxi. You know, ambulance guy's got it with him. Isn't that weird? Ambulance kind of attitude, you know what I mean? They're trying to yank my jacket off. Like, my arm isn't good here. Yeah, I'm having a bad day. Welcome to the club, man. You know? So I got to the hospital, the house of Pedacetamol. And they took a look at my x ray and went, which is a bad reaction. You never want to have any medical professional look at your test results. Dude. And she said to me, would you like some morphine? And again, bad sign. When they did then I said, yeah, I'll take a shot. It was pretty good, too. Kind of me right now. And uh, they took a look at it for a little while, and they sent me home, and she said, would you like another shot of morphine? I said, yeah, sure. Because all they did was conservative treatment. Have you heard this? It's a nice way of saying nothing. <laughs> it's another, you know, the Dutch are, they're cheap is what it comes down to. And this was Dutch efficiency because it was financially very efficient. They gave me a blue strap. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these blue straps before. They're kind of blue. It's a strap. <laughs> Got a little cover on it which means it's modern technology. This is my third one, if you're wondering. And they sent me home with the words, it comes good. You heard this? If you haven't been heard, they'll tell you that. Therapists, doctors, tell them it comes good. They buy you some time. It's optimistic. It's very, very cheap. The only time it comes good is useful as feedback is when you're going through Yelp reviews for a sperm donor. <laughs> Five stars. <laughs> so I go home optimistically, and they tell me to keep exercising it. Let's see how worse it That's so you leave it. And uh, so I'm supposed to keep it loose, and it only works for so more actively, but I can push it up higher. So I'm in my backyard trying to keep my arm flexible, waving to my neighbors. I'm getting this really bad vibe from everybody. Yeah, they thought I was a Nazi. <laughs> I told him what happened to me, you know? I don't think I'm aspiring to become an Nazi. I mean, it's not any good. <laughs> so I went back to the doctor and said, Doc, this isn't coming good here, you know? I mean, I can get my arm up about that far. I have arm erectile dysfunction, and the first step in coming good is getting it up. <laughs> I'm not getting dates with this thing here. And he said to me, hey, last and bend it, guys. <laughs> Which was covered, I think. But nonetheless, it's a great Dutch saying. It's useless as fuck. It needs OL peanut butter. <laughs> In a medical situation, this is not useful, you know? It was true, but not useful. It's like, again, the, the, the briny ones I love, again, is for me, was smoking the cocaine. Which, if you don't know, means fucking in the kitchen. I was here three months when I was taught that. And oh my. Today is my anniversary, by the way. This is my, I think, 14th year of being in the Netherlands. Thanks for having me. And I learned, like I said, within three months, Noken and Nikokin, which is a strange saying if there ever was one. I don't know how to use Noken and Nikokin in context. I mean, I can't hey last Pentecost. I've experienced hey last Pentecost lots of times. But like Noken and Nikokin, the only thing I know is possible is that you combine Hey Last Pentecost and Noken and Nikokin. <laughs> and you end up with some hay sauce? <laughs> I think. So 
So I finally convinced him to do surgery on me. It took eight months, which was a really long, fun, painful time. And they finally did surgery eight months later, and he went overboard in a weird direction because I had 12 screws, a carbon fiber plate, and a bone from a dead man. Now, I don't know who he was, but I didn't kill him. I mean, I was really weak, so he had been really far gone from me to die in the first place. But they also took some bone out of my knee and they murk bone marrow. Horrible words to learn in Dutch. You don't even know the word murk. Now you do. <laughs> me too. I'm not going to forget those words. But then I couldn't walk for like four months. Messed my leg up. And that Dutch word for that situation is forces. Or <laughs> 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 Because me, it was more of a thing. I mean, I experienced that word before when my train passed and I had, you know, caught it. That was definitely, <laughs> but when you can't get up from every word, way the hell over there, it's just a lifetime of, <laughs> but there's worse times, I think, to hear that word. I think it's like just before sex. Really bad time to hear that word, I think, you know. Probably really worse even you know, after sex, also. That was all right. <laughs> so I thought I was done with this whole thing and life was back to normal and then my shoulder turned necrotic. That was a fun visit to the doctor. Yeah, it comes good, huh? No, no, it comes necrotic. So they wanted to do more work and I thought I should get a second opinion, you know. So I went to Germany, naturally, because the Germans, when you think about it, They've done all the experiments. <laughs> They're all of them. You know. So I went to them and I asked them the whole situation and they looked through my paperwork and all that. I said, according to our test, uh, your mother's Jewish? <laughs> I said, yeah. Is that relevant? No, I'm just checking. <laughs> so I explained about the arm and I showed them how much movement I had and they got all excited. Started goose stepping around the room and said, Listen, hey, hey, look at that excited. You know? It was too German. But I decided to have the surgery back here, actually. And you know one of the big differences between the Dutch and the Germans? The Dutch are absolutely not German. But that's it. Other than that, it's very, very similar. <laughs> Never hit the white cord. So I had the surgery one week ago, they took out the screws, they took out the plate, they wasted my bone and nerve, and they took out the bullet from the dead man. So I killed a man for nothing. And finally, hopefully I'll be healing up shortly for this thing. And so I find myself getting older somehow. Against the odds as it turns out. I just turned 57 a couple months ago. Appreciate it. Or the <laughs> saying, uh, 75! <laughs> Which feels so much more accurate. <laughs> and I find that my life is changing. I'm going through that arc of life, you know, like when I was younger, you know, I had my personal emoji. Uh, it wasn't the abuji. Not sick like that. It was a rhinoceros. Because he was strong and fast, you know, the horn to be proud of. But now I realize I'm more of an elephant. Because I'm getting fatter and slower. The trunk's just dangling down. <laughs> yeah, I used to think if it was Mr. Johnson, you know, Mr. Willie Johnson, or Willie to his friends. Now I'm realizing that Willie's not necessarily a name. It could also be a question. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, as a Greek, again, the language thing is cool to me. I think some of the weird words that you guys pick for words, you know, like shkachi. I don't get shkachi, you know. I suppose you say shachin. But to me, it's like, you know, in America, our favorite little wonderful thing is like a cinnamon bun, sugar pot, you know, honey roll. Because if you love something, make it fat, kill it. 
But to me, you know, Scotch is a very harsh sounding word, you know. You can short it down to Scott. But I'm not saying, well, no, let me complain, my Dutch again. I understand. <laughs> Immigrants. I like the word ouchie. A little onion. You know, ouchie. Ouchie. Oh, ouchie. Yeah. You can never get one of them. But if I say enough things, you'll figure it out against you. But again, ouchie. I like ouchie. It's a nicer sounding word, you know. You know, I like to be out. You know, out was a fun sound that it was hard for people. I have a lot of Dutch friends. They were helping teach me the language. Not very well, but they tried. It's their fault, not mine. And they showed me how to say out. You know, if you, if you get enough stuff, Dutch people around you will try to help you. You know, it's like you have to push an egg out of your mouth. You know, out, 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 out. And they will all be trying to help. It's like your own school of Dutch fish. You know, out, out, out. <laughs> and it's super, it's just, it's exotic, you know what I mean? It's laughing, you know? Again, like the most Dutch word of all time is, of course, swaffle. <laughs> now again, I moved here in 2009, and Swathlin was the Dutch word of the year, 2008. And if you don't know what Swathlin means, it's, a very, it's like they needed a word for this, you know? Like, it came up so often, and it's, it's when you're like, you're smacking your dick against something, and that's Swathlin. You know, and the Dutch needed a word for it because they got tired of saying, you know, smack your dick against it. You know. What's the word in the... Smack your dick against it. <laughs> <laughs> and then run, because someone's going to be shooting towards it. Yeah. And we don't do that shit. Everyone's got a gun. And yeah. yeah. My two P's and Q's in the U.S. is all I'm saying. <laughs> But that happened in India, the guy swathed from the Taj Mahal of all things, and they made a video of it, and it went viral, because there wasn't that many videos in 2008, you know what I'm saying? But, for the, the, of course, the most Dutch word, the wonderful word, that I think this is the word, is kazala, you know, and that word for the wonderful warm evening that we have together as a group, you know what I'm saying? And I like that for the Dutch world, because let's face it, the weather sucks. <laughs> Half the time, you know what I mean? Not all the time. Three quarters of the time. When I was here the year without a summer, you remember that one? Like 13, 14, or whatever, 15, it was like cold the whole goddamn summertime. Yeah. I wore thermal underwear, I was like, hey, it's July, man. <laughs> man. <laughs> but last year was great, we had six months in wonderful weather, didn't we? I didn't, I was, I was doing this a lot. <laughs> But I was also doing a lot of Oxycontin, so in the end, it was unselling for me, you know what I'm saying? But I was in Greece a little while ago, and uh, languages are so tight sometimes, and I was trying to, there's a, there's a drink in Greek called Tsipuro. And there's also a fish, well, no, I did that backwards, there's a fish called Tsipuro. But there's a drink called Tsipuro. And as you can see, they're kind of similar. So I went to the restaurant, I thought I'd buy some fish, and he brought me a drink. I figured, all right, I don't look like an idiot. So I shot the drink. And then uh, I tried to order some fish again. Didn't happen. <laughs> Long story short, in the end, I did not have anything to eat that night. But I had a great time. <laughs> and that's what life's about. So my name was Sakai. You guys are great. I'll see you again soon. Thanks so much. Good